of all, I'll start with the most shocking thing. Um, and and I'm kind of known in the markets as fundamentally an optimist. I like almost always see the upside to things. Um, and I, I'm actually optimistic about where we're going right now. But I would say, in one sense, we kind of are already in World War Three. We are in the midst of uh, what they call sub-threshold conflict. So it's just below the level that requires official responses, but it's serious enough that everyone in the military knows that we're nose to nose with the Russians, we're nose to nose with the Chinese. Um, there are actual physical incidents occurring in various parts of the world every day, um, but they're just below the threshold that everyone knows would make it public information. So we have this weird situation where the general public thinks everything's fine. I mean, you have some noisy exchanges of words now and again, but fundamentally we're not at war. Whereas in the military, you have the sense of we're definitely at war. It's just being conducted in a way the public is unaware of. And I think that's actually a rather dangerous situation. And, and it means you're on the border of the kind of conflict that could flare up very suddenly with seemingly no warning. Although if you're watching this, you should be able to see it coming from a mile off. So that's one thing. And second then is it's multipolar. It's happening um, not just the US and China, but also the US and Russia, but it's also happening in remote locations. So the South China Sea, where there's nobody to witness except for the people actually involved. Or for example, the skirmishes that keep happening between China and India, which are all up in very remote parts of the Himalayas. And again, very important from their perspective, but not visible to the press. Same with Scandinavia, where we see lots of kind of nose to nose you know, submarines, fighter jets between NATO and Russia, the US and Russia, they're all flying within a coat of paint of each other. So it feels to the participants like we're really on the edge. But the public is like, what? There was a there was a near miss somewhere over Finland? Like, and is that relevant? Like, what, what does that mean? Is that even worth having a conversation about? So then let me add finally then the pandemic and what the pandemic has, the pandemic's done a lot of things, but maybe more than anything, it's made it much harder to make sense of reality. And sense making has actually become like a, a, a branch of philosophy now uh, that is, I think, becoming the most important branch of philosophy because people can't make sense of what is going on in the world. And they're realizing that the seemingly trusted sources of information, like for example, academic journals or government authorities on um, on pandemics or um, you know virologists, actually maybe you can't completely trust uh, what's said. And so the flip-flopping of positions further undermines the confidence in authority generally. And when you undermine confidence in authority, you begin to also give oxygen to geopolitics. So there's a lot going on. <laughs>